Hey coaches, Coach Simpson coming back to you from Searcy, Arkansas. This is day three of situational football. Uh, if you would like more information specifically after I get done with this video, you can reach out to me, fbcoachsimpson at gmail.com or my website or any other way. So uh, for me, I'm going to speak this week on generic type deals. So whatever offense you may run or defense you may run, this stuff should still apply to you. But one of the most underappreciated parts of really sports in general, but especially of football, is situational football, understanding those key situations. So Monday, we talked about uh, red zone play. Tuesday, we talked about third downs. Today, we're going to talk about the hash, okay? Running plays from the wide side of the field, or into the wide side of the field, or short side of the field, we're running plays from a hash. Uh, this is something that probably a couple of years ago uh, we figured out uh, I was not doing a great job of coaching up and some coaches do a really really good job of this but you've got to practice this as well you know so all these situations just because you know what you like does not always mean your kids know what they like and sometimes uh, we don't do a good job as coaches of kind of communicating this is things we like from the hash or from wherever it is so First thing you gotta figure out if you're gonna be on the hash is how is the defense attacking you? Are they lining up to you by formation? So if you're maybe a, uh, like we are, we're a tight end wing last season, last couple of years at uh, the schools I've been at. So teams a lot of times would attack us formationally. They were more concerned with where the strength of our offense was as far as the front by formation. Okay. However, if you're in a more balanced type offense or a more balanced type set, a lot of times even the coordinators will call their strength to the wide side of the field. And so they'll slant their front to the wide side or they'll roll coverage stuff to the wide side or they'll even put maybe that bonus player. So like in a 3-3 defense um, where they're trying to get a bonus guy, sometimes they'll offset to the wide side of the field or especially those four front defenses where you know, they've got three linebackers that may offset them to the wide side of the field. So how are they playing you? Are you going to try to dictate that by formation to get them into the short side of the field and then you can attack wide side? Or are they going to line up on the wide side and you're going to attack into your strength? And so different things you need to be thinking about is how does the defense think? And then once you've got that figured out philosophy-wise on their end, you can decide, okay, we're going to attack you know, maybe trips to the field, uh, we're going to attack this. Or trips into the boundary, and we're going to attack this. You can be good at either one, but usually you need to figure out where you're going to gain the numbers, what's the better play for you, okay? Second one is trips. I mentioned it already, or overs. So trips, tray, flavors of trips, quads, you know, however you get into your version of trips. Empty with trips out there. That's a great set to run on the hatch because you figure out real quickly how are they handling that are you gonna can you put trips into the boundary and get two on three and get a quick easy screen out there and, and get some yardage or do you put trips into the field and they've stayed two over three and now that space is now two-thirds of the field so a lot of room out there uh, depending on how they're going to attack your trips or your quads or your tray set or whatever you're doing you know, a lot of times putting trips into the field gets you a huge advantage as far as space goes. Really puts a conflict on the defense, okay? How are they going to handle that? And then you can also shift into trips. Uh, a lot of times you can go balance and motion into trips, and now you've gained even more space for your trips. Or if it's a team that's calling it by the wide side of the field, you can bring your trips into the boundary and now you may even get three on one over there for some things you might want to run. So you need to figure this part out and then trips is a great set or an overset to gain people. Okay. And then finally, and you're going to see in every session I do, I'm ending with personnel. Okay. So personnel is the most important part of football. Actually, tomorrow's session is going to be about people because that's the most important thing as a coach we can do. I think a lot of times as coaches, you know, we think very highly of ourselves. Uh, but the reality is, it's the guy on the field who's making a play. So understand on the hash, how can I get my guy in the most space or get him a one-on-one -on -one, uh, possible? And so if the team's going to play me wide side of the field, I might put my 
good player uh, to, the, to the short side of the field one-on-one, I guarantee he gets one-on-one coverage and an easy, quick throw for the quarterback. Or, okay, they're, not, they're playing two or three on trips. Now I can put him as number two or number three or number one in trips, depending on what you like, and get him the most space and the best matchup. So always think about personnel in any situation, but the hash is important as well because now you can maybe get your really good athlete either a one-on-one to the boundary or a lot of space to the field. Okay, So that's the situation for today. Hash, again, if you want more information specifically on my offense, feel free to reach out to me. I appreciate your time.